There's a land that is fairer than day. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, let us pray this morning to you, Lord, and ask you, Lord, each and every day for the love, grace, mercy, and hope that only you can give. And Lord, you already give it to us. But Lord, I know you want to... When we ask, Lord, you know that we're looking to you and no one else. And I pray that we can put you first in everything we do and rely on you for everything that we need. And the hope and the mercy and grace, let us not go to other things and look for it when you've already provided. Each and every day you give us the love that we need to glorify you and to press on in this life, Lord. I thank you for all in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we're going to talk about love again. How can we love something, or anything, matter of fact, and not get love back? I mean, as, as, as greedy as we are in the flesh, as... as, as focusing on ourselves as we are in the flesh, how can we love anything that don't love us? I ask you this morning, how can I love anybody, anything, any, anything that I come in contact with and it's not giving me nothing back in return? You know, this old flesh I always wants something in return. We got to have something in return to give something. Amen? Think about it. Before we get up on your pedestal, before we get on our high horse and we start saying, Oh, preacher, I do everything I humanly possible I can do for the Lord and everybody. You go on and start bragging on yourself and you're going to fall. But love never fails. Amen? Okay. This morning we're going to start in John. Yeah, we're going to start in John. I don't know Lord knows. I don't know where we're going to end up. John chapter 13, verse 31. <clears throat> now Jesus talking to his disciples here. He said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Amen? If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Now Jesus calling what he calling you and I, because we disciples of him, but he, he was talking to his, his uh, disciples here, and he said, little children. Now, you know, that's kind of a degrading, you know, now, day, and time. For somebody to call you, you have a mind of a child, you know, little children. Somebody call you a, ch a, a child is what I'm saying. Little children, Jesus said. And the disciples didn't take offense to that. They didn't take, they didn't get on there. Jesus, what are you calling me today? You know? But we get so offended by just a word, and we start thinking and start knowing and start believing that the one I'm loving don't love me back. Praise God, I want to have the mind of a child. I want to have uh, the mind of someone that can give love without mm, that can take love without giving love or giving love without taking love. You know what I mean? That little puppy I got, that little dog. That dog loves me. I don't care what I do to him, how he do. It don't matter. He might kind of shut away and get uh, uh, a little mad every once in a while because I might have took something away from him, or I might have spanned him a little bit for doing something wrong, but he always comes back. He always comes back. And he loves me, regardless. My daughter got one same way. I mean, that dog loves her and goes with her everywhere she goes. Because there's love there, the unconditional love. Amen? It's the same way with Jesus Christ. He loves us unconditionally, but we make him sad at times. Amen? Because we're not giving him the love that he's given us. And you know, he even loves me when I don't love him or when I didn't love him. 
Amen. And when I say don't love him, it's when I go to sin. And when I do a sin, I'm not giving him the love. Think about it. I still love Jesus, but I sin. I still go behind his back and do things like old Peter did, you know. Am I giving him the love that I should each and every day? When he's always giving it back to me. Amen. Okay, little children, yet, yet a little while, I'm with you. You shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love to one another. There ain't nothing I hate worse than to be around an old sour twist, unloving Christian. Is that humanly is that spiritually possible to be a lun unloving Christian? Not giving love because you ain't getting no love back. Not taking the love that Jesus Christ gives each and every day and giving it to others. Because you know as well as I do, when I start trying to give my love, it's nearly void. It'll go just a little bit and it stop. Go you know, right in the middle of the whole thing, I'm going to be thinking, what am I going to get back? What does he give me that I should do for them? Amen? Okay. So we got love. How are we going to love somebody that we don't like? How are we going to love somebody that shuns me every time I get around them? Or don't want to talk to me? Or don't want to have nothing to do with me? How can I love somebody like that? Well, ask Jesus Christ and he will tell you. He'll tell you. He tells you right here in this book right here. If you love one another, you can be my disciple. It's plain as that. We have to love. No matter who goes up, walks up to this door, I got to love them. No matter who I meet, I got to love them. Amen? I got to. The Bible says it right there. I didn't. And it's in red. Boy, that is a, that is a kicker right there. Then. When it says red in the Bible, yes, ma'am. We have to take it to the bank. <coughs> Paul said it. John said it. Leroy said it, it don't matter who said it. But when Jesus says it, we got to do it. We got to listen in order to be a Christian. We don't have to do it. He gives us free will each and every day. To be, to be a Christian, we have to love one another as we love ourselves each and every time. So when I start trying to love somebody, I'm going to have to say, do I love that person as much as I love myself? I can give love all day long, but I don't expect nothing in return. Unconditional love. Unconditional love is love that never fails. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 says. How can I love? How can I love Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit the only way you can love? There's no other way. Because our love is fake talk about the flesh love and we can't love one another as we love ourselves but in Jesus Christ with his love we can draw a strength from him each and every day we can do all things through him that strengthens me I can love everybody on the face of this earth if I'm drawing my love from him what, all, what about all the people he's turning his back on he's not turning his back on them. he's waiting on them He's waiting on them to knock on the door. He's waiting on them to open the door. He's waiting on them to let him come in. So that is the love that is unconditional. He went to the cross for you and I, for that door to be open for us to come in. And that's all we got to do is walk on in, sit down at the table, and eat with him, talk to him, rejoice with him, hope with him, do everything with him. 
if you want to be with him one day. Amen. So how can I love somebody that don't love me? I got two words for that. And they got ten capital letters on each one of them. Jesus Christ, that's the only way. Amen. That's the only way we can love. And this here it says, Now is the Son of Man glorified. The Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in Him. They are loving one another in glorification. They are lifting each other up in glorification. They are loving, 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 pouring it down on them. How does somebody, how are you going to walk up and tell somebody, I love you? How can we do that? I don't care who you see, who you meet. I don't care if it's old people, young people. I don't care if it's people in your past, people in your future. It don't matter who they are. We have to love them as Jesus Christ loves us. Amen. We have to love the sorest old infidel there is. Amen. Why? Do I walk around each and every day finding faults in people when I have so much faults in myself? Why do I look down on people when I need to be looking down on myself? Why do I hate people when I hate the, the, the sin that I do? If we start looking at ourselves each and every day, we can love one another. Think about it. Think about it. Amen. As you know, all oh, oh, these disciples, Lord have mercy. Verse 38, chapter 13, John says, Jesus, uh, uh, no, let's go 37. Peter said it to him, Lord, why cannot, can, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Whoa, Peter. How many people in the church this morning that say, Jesus Christ, I'm laying down my life for you? How many people woke up this morning and said, I'm laying my life down to you? How many people haven't even thought about it? But the ones that did and the ones that said it, if we don't do it, we're lying to God. We're telling a story. We're saying, I'm laying down my life for you. That's a big ordeal, people. You think about the things in your life and the things that you do in your life and things you're going to do in your life and you think about, I'm going to lay all that down for God. I mean, everything I have, I give unto you. It is yours to do with as you see fit and not I. Amen? Well, how am I going to do that? How am I going to lay down my life? How am I going to give him unconditional love like he's giving it to me? Through Him, that's the only way we can. I can't give without Him. I can't love without Him. I can't prosper without Him. And Lord knows I can't do no good without Him. How do we think there's good in us? How do we think we are all that? How do we think and know and believe, God, I think I can handle this just a little better than you can. And then we're going to sit back on our thumb and say, Oh, Lord God, I would never say that. Well, every time you go forth without him, you say it just that. Amen? Every time. Every time. And yeah, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, this morning. I'm full of the Spirit. I may be getting a little loud here this morning, but the serious Spirit's getting loud in me. Amen? Don't blame me. Blame the Spirit. Praise God. Because he's given me the strength this morning. As he will give to you. And you can feel it, and you can know it, and you can believe it, and you can say, it is real, Jesus. It is real. Don't be ashamed to preach the gospel everywhere we go. Amen? Everywhere we go. Now is the Son of Man glorified. Now you and I are glorified in Him, believing in Him, knowing in Him, and always trusting in Him. Amen? Woo, praise God. When he calls me a little child, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because I have the ways of a child. 
in my mind a lot of times. I stomp my foot and I go, I get mad around here and, and then I get aggravated or I get upset when somebody tells me, or you act like a child. Well, let me examine myself before I start thinking. That's wrong. I would never do that. Amen. Because there's only one way. Chapter 14 of John. First, first, first verse here. Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. If you believe in God, believe in me also. Now I know a lot of people big to differ that. But you can't love God without loving Jesus Christ. Because you can't draw the love from God without Jesus Christ. Amen? That's because love is not in you. Remember that? Love is in Him through the blood, through the, through the Son, through Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can love. And it says, here, let your heart not be troubled. Because He said, if you believe in God, you got to believe in me also. That's the only way we can draw strength. That's the only way we can talk to God. That's the only way we can draw strength from God. Amen? Well, how did the people in the Old Testament, how did they draw strength from God? How did they go through life without Jesus Christ? Because God sent them a prophet. And when the prophet's life was fulfilled, they passed away and another would come along. Well, praise God, after all that time it went by, all of a sudden, a Savior was born. A Savior was born. A Savior was born. A Savior, y'all excuse me just a minute, will you take him out for me? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Your love, your grace, your mercy, your hope. Bless his heart, he runs that door every time he wants to go out. That, that dog ain't three months old. I tell you, some dogs smarter than some people. I tell you what. <laughs> that was a joke. Okay. We're going to start right here with chapter 14. Yeah, I'm an old country preacher preaching out of my house this morning. And things go on around here even when church is going on sometimes. You don't have to have a little a stop just a minute, you know. And, and, and back in the day, the same way to church. Because churches were churches back then. Nobody looked at one another what they was doing. They were steady looking at the preacher. They were steady glorifying God. They weren't worried about what was going on around them. You know what I mean? Praise God. Hmm. Verse 6. I'm going to say it here in a minute. Praise God. Y'all hang with me. Chapter 14, John. Verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. The what now? I am the way. This is Jesus talking. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by who? By who? It's not Abraham. It's not Isaac. It's not Moses. Oh, I love that man. I love to read about that man. It's not them. They gone. They dead. They in heaven with Jesus. They gone. There's only one that's the truth, the way, and the life. Right there. That's the only way. No man come unto me. Don't You can't go to the Father without Jesus Christ. Praise God. How many times have, we got to, have I got to preach that? The Bible says it plain and true. How can we believe the Bible if we don't believe in Jesus Christ? How can we believe in anything if we don't believe in Jesus Christ? How can I love without Jesus Christ? How can I have hope? How can I not sin? I'm going to sin even with Him. But with Him I can ask forgiveness. And with Him I know without a shadow of a doubt He's going to love me. As He always had even when I did was lost and didn't have as much to do with Him as I do now. Lay down your life. Wow. 
you know, I think about old Abraham. You know, how in the world can you lay down your life? I mean, lay down your son's life. How can you do that? How can you say, take me? Don't take my son. But Jesus, but God told him, I don't want you. I want your son. And I don't know who you, I don't know what, how your love for your family is going on right now, but I don't, I don't understand how I could put my son to death or my daughter either one. I don't understand that. But God says, if I tell you to do it, you're going you're gonna to have to do it to follow me. So let's think about it. I'm going to put my life, I'm going to lay down my life for God. Spiritually. Amen? Mentally. That's a big step, people. He loved us before we loved Him. He loves us when we don't love Him. He loves us when we're sinning. He loves us when we are lost. He loves us no matter what. We, as Christian folks, have to do the same thing. Love them where they're at. And let vengeance be God's job. Remember where it says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord? Well, why am I always trying to be the one that's being ven uh, cast vengeance on somebody? Praise God. Woo, we're going to move around just a little bit now, I think. I'm getting ready to close. And you know how that goes sometimes. Chapter 13, verse Corinthians, right here, verse 8. I, I said it a while ago, and I'm going to read it. Charity, King James says, and Love and every all the rest of them, I think. Love never faileth, but where there is prophecies, they shall fail. Where there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish. And it says, verse 13, And now abideth faith. Hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. How can we call ourselves a Christian and not love? How can I do that each and every day? How? I'm serving an almighty God, laying my life down for Him in love. Well, I was thinking about it this morning. How can I love something that don't love me back? I tell you what, I love me a big old pint of that Bluebell ice cream. That millennium is about my favorite. I, I love them all. I mean, the old Bluebell makes it. It's, it's good, except for that cooking dough. I don't really care for that too much. But how can I love ice cream so much when it don't love me back. I put it in my mouth, I swoosh it around, I get a good feeling all over and when I swallow it, I just feel the, the love all over it, ain't me? You know, get up the next morning, get on the scale and they don't want up a pound. Or I don't need a bunch of, uh, in me, you know, I don't have gallbladder, and in me if I eat a bunch of grease and I eat something sweet or eat some something to kind of stir it up a little bit. I get the indigestion, you know, and I just get the feeling bad. And, but I love ice cream. There's so many things that we love and don't get love back. You know what? We might not get immediate love, but not forever love is what I'm trying to say here. Amen? How in the world can we get for, forever love out of something that we just swallow. How can we get forever love out of something that we did yesterday? How can we get forever love out of something? Right there.
right there, or right here, which is Jesus Christ. That is the only forever love that you will ever have. And if my wife is drawing forever love from Jesus Christ, she is forever loving me. And she can love me, I can love her unconditionally if I'm drawing my love from him. So whenever we go, we say, okay. Woo! How can I love unconditionally of myself? Do you want love that has conditions on it? Or do you want love that is unconditioned? Whether I make her unconditionally, I make her mad, amen? She still loves me. When I don't get what I want sometimes, I still love her. Amen? You see where I'm going here? How can we love something unconditionally and still not get nothing back in return. Well, Jesus Christ does it every day. And we're going to say, I'm a follower of him? Oh, Peter. Judas, Judas. Remember him? He did it at the dinner table. Peter waited till he got in front of all these men. I don't know that man. i never seen that man. Because he become afraid. Because he was not a follower of Jesus Christ at that particular moment. You know, there's moments in our life when we're not a follower. We try to be a leader. And Lord, have mercy, I see it in churches every day. People trying to be a leader instead of a follower. I thank God each and every day that I am able to be a follower of my God. Do I, or do we fit his standard? Do we live up to his standard each and every day? In him we can, in ourselves we can. It's that simple. So if we're not living up to his standards, if we're not doing what he tells us to do, who's stepping in, the th in, in, in between? We are. It's like eating bluebell ice cream and not, not waiting on the aftermath. You know what I mean? But you know a lot of things, we start, we start talking about eating here, a lot of things we eat, we think we don't like. I don't like that particular spice in there. I don't like black pepper. But you know the wife tells me once well, I put black pepper in there, you don't need it. You tell me I had black pepper. No, I don't I didn't taste no black pepper. What you don't know sometimes, you still love it. Does that make sense? If I start digging around, if we start digging around in what somebody really thinks of us, Sooner or later, we're going to get upset. We're going to get mad. Because they're going to hurt our feelings. There's no way around. Unless they're drawing their strength from God to tell us what we need to be told. And how are we going to get mad then? How are we going to get upset then? Because we know what's in the Bible and what that person is speaking is truth because they're speaking after the Scriptures. They're speaking after God. They're speaking after Jesus Christ. So how can we get upset? How can we say and turn our back on that person for telling us the truth? And call ourselves a Christian. That's what I can't figure out. I can't figure it out. I, I don't understand how Christian folks put their whole life, everything revolves around the church. Everything revolves around the business meetings. Everything revolves around how many people come to Sunday school, church, whole night, everything. And pray to God for it to happen. Well, I want to tell you what. We have to put him first. We have to ask his advice and do it. And he will call the people and they will come. Amen? 
I used to go over to Oakwood, well, it's a nursing home over there in Maroon. I preached over there a few years. And man, my son and my grandsons, and well, my family go with me a lot of times, you know. And we'd run them halls, trying to get people to church. Run them halls, begging people to come to church. And a lot of times it wasn't over four or five people there. But we run ourselves to death trying to get somebody to church. All of a sudden one day, you come to me. I I'm not the one that's supposed to do the calling. I'm not the one that's supposed to be badgering people. I'm not the one that's supposed to be pitting them overhead with the Bible. I'm not the one that's going to go on around people telling them to come to church. I'm not the one to tell them. But Lord have mercy. I see every Sunday on that Facebook, going to church, got to come to church. Are you going to church? We got to go to church. Everybody come to church. And I see the pews getting emptier and emptier. Not us do the calling. Let God do the calling through us. That's a big difference. Then we're not begging. Then we're asking. The way Jesus Christ does each and every day. He don't beg you. He asks you. Will you come? Will you come? And you know he gets so excited when God says, I'm calling that person. I'm bringing that person out of the hall, out of the out of the room, into the hall, down to the church, or going down a highway. We don't do anything on our own. You think about that. God does the calling. God is the. If I could ever get that through my head, God called everyone in the Bible to do a specific task. Think about that. And we're going to think, well, I'm doing this on my own. No, you ain't. There's no way I can even lift that arm without God. Because why? Because he made that arm, amen? He made the strength to put it in the arm to raise it up. God does the calling. We can do the calling if God is saying do the calling. Amen? But we can't do it on our own. If we do, it's going to be nothing but fake. The church building will be immaculate, but God will be on the outside knocking, trying to get in. Amen? And that is where I want to leave this sermon right here. If we would stop especially Christians, trying to live in the flesh, trying to prosper the flesh, instead of trying to be a Christian. And then calling ourselves a Christian is even worse. Let God do the calling. Let God use you to do the calling. If he says, do it. So I'm telling you here this morning, God's will will be done regardless of you and I. Because nobody was here, nobody was there when he threw them stars in the sky. I didn't have to run around and take up a collection to, to buy a bunch of stars for him to throw up in that sky. Amen. He didn't need you and I. He didn't need our money. He, he sure didn't need us when he was making the world, something so immaculate as that. You mean he didn't need me? I thought God needed me all the time. God don't need you. So it is such a privilege for someone that don't need me to use me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody that loves me regardless of anything in this world that I'm doing, he loves me enough To let me work for him. Somebody don't need no help. Wow.
They get to the unemployment line. Are you telling me I'm helping somebody that don't need no help? Wow. If I don't do it, he's going to get somebody else. He's going to do it himself anyway. Because all he got to do is just point. And we run around each and every day running ourselves to death trying to be a Christian for him instead of waiting on his point. His point. I got to talk about old Scooter just a minute and I'm going to cut you down. Mm -hmm. But it's, he's the one of my wife's arms now, sleeping. That's the only time he's really good is when he's sleeping. But anyhow, he got this tissue paper. He got a thing about tissue toilet paper, you know. Oh, he'll just run down through the house and get half dragging behind him and he'll chew it up, swallow a bunch of it and all that and everything. Well, I got him in that chair and I, I showed you this ball of toilet paper. And I put it up to his nose and he tried to grab it and I said, eh, or no, or whatever. And he looked at me like I don't know my mind. But he, he said, I don't know if I need to touch it anymore. So when he didn't touch it, I said, good boy. That's a good boy. You're doing good. And you know, he just got to praise it. Then I put the toilet paper back up there and he just moved his mouth a little bit like he wanted to grab it. But he was waiting on me to say, good boy. Mm. Don't we do that each and every day? I hope we do as Christian folks. Waiting on God to say, good boy, good child, good girl, good. You did good by me. That's what we need to be waiting on each and every day, and it feels so good when it comes from Him and not from somebody that's fake. Good job. I used to preach a sermon, I stepped down, and people say, Oh, Orvin, that was a good job. And I'd say, Oh, it's, it's all the Lord. The Lord did it, I didn't do it. I was wrong, people. The only reason I'm standing in front of this camera right here is because God called me. Amen. Because if He didn't want me here, I wouldn't be here. And I thank y'all for coming, but a glorious day of the Lord. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, if you don't love Him, if you don't know Him, if you don't have a relationship with Him, please do. Please do. And not only Biggest thing that I'm thinking we're looking forward to going to heaven, but right now, there's no greater love than Him. There's no greater love that you can give except through Him. Thank y'all for coming. May the glorious day of the Lord. Amen.